Hey, how are you? I have, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm, I've been hiding out from her infernal majesty after I borrowed her dress. She was really, really pissed with me. So I've been, I've been hiding out. That's where, that's why I've been away for so long. Anyway, anyway, um, I have for you this week something a little bit different because two weeks ago, the best band on the planet finally dropped like eight hours of the Let It Be footage. Yay! And I'm here. I, <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about what, how, how, what this tells us about creatives and creative process and how you can use eight hours of watching the Beatles in rehearsal and recording and performance help your creative process, how that can help you. Now, I know Hatta usually talks about all the creative process sort of stuff, but Hatta was having one of her less lucid days and she thought we were talking about bugs. So I said, like, no way, man. No way am I letting her t take over one of the most exciting things to come out of the Beatles ever. So... I'm here to do this. Before we get started, if you want to some help with your creative process, remember, it's still here. If you order off the website before the 15th, you should get it in time for Christmas. But otherwise, just it's available. It's available. So links below for your creative process. Now, this isn't my usual sort of um, video, so I took notes. I had to take notes, and now I have to read my awful handwriting without my glasses, so bear with me. So here are my notes. I have lots. There are pages of them. But there was just it's eight hours of footage, guys, so really I just... If there was a lot in there to discuss and a lot that was pertinent to you that I wanted to bring to you because it's the Beatles. I mean, man, if you're going to learn anything, you're going to learn from the best, man. Okay, so first thing that we can find out is that works don't just drop out of the air fully processed, fully formed, which is the impression that you would get if you watch the original Lindsay Hogg Let It Be, as opposed to the Peter Jackson Get Back, because Lindsay Hogg edited it as though, oh, look, Get Back, just boom, it's there. It doesn't need working on. It doesn't need anything. It's just boom, there. And that sort of attitude is really, really damaging for creative people because the assumption is that, oh, I didn't have a piece of work just drop out of thin air, fully formed as though it was dictated by God, so therefore I must be wrong. Well, no. If Paul McCartney and John Lennon and George Harrison need to work on and work on and play with things to get them right, then you can too. There is no shame in having something that you have to work on. It's the process. You know, I mean, sure, they can do it a lot faster, but they're the Beatles. They've been doing this for years. Of course, they can come up with an album in about 21 days and a better, and a better album than most other bands could come up with in ages and ages. They came up with arguably their weakest album, but... A weak album by a brilliant band is better than a good album by a so-so band, so, you know. But still, they work at it. It doesn't just drop out of thin air. All right, so number two is no matter how talented you are, you still need to draft and refine. So thinking about the fact that um, 
you know, we're not dropping things in from God. We're just, you know, these pieces need to be worked. They've got words missing. They've got not quite there. You see, like, you, you're watching really talented people pull stuff out of, out of nothing, yes, but that's any creative process is pulling something out of nothing. But it doesn't come as a fully formed thing. I mean, just going through all of these completely different lyrics and completely different ways of telling the, you know, working on the song, for them clearly the music comes easily, but the words take longer like what are you going to do with this song is it going to be a protest song initially it started looking like that and then it became something else and that that sort of thing is like that happens to everyone it's not unique to 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 you that you have to draft if you don't draft if you don't refine you will you will just put out something that is half baked because the refining process is where something gets better. Drafting is where your initial idea gets better. So don't underestimate that as an important thing. No matter how talented you are, it still happens. You might be able to shortcut the process, but it still needs to happen. Okay, third thing, you will throw out far more than you use. There are a whole load of ideas that they have that they just chuck out. You have to be free with the idea that not everything is gold. Don't be precious about your ideas. Use them, play with them, decide it doesn't work, chuck it out. You will always have a lot of stuff in the throw out. Honestly, if you're not throwing stuff out, you're not refining. And if you're not refining, you're not getting better. You're just being too precious about things. I mean, even the stuff that is, is, is the Beatles, so the stuff they chuck out is better than some of the stuff that other people do. But even so, when you hear the finished product, you can hear, oh, yeah, this is so much better than what they were playing with. So it's really important. Okay, fourth thing. I told you, this is a long list. Sometimes the words you're looking for take a while to arrive. It took them ages to find the word Tucson, Arizona. Forget back. And it's so funny watching it and just thinking, it's Tucson. It's Tucson. Apparently, Peter Jackson watched 15 minutes of footage of them and, and just thinking, it's Tucson, Arizona. It's Tucson. It's Tucson, Arizona. But that's, that's only because we have seen the finished product. They are still fumbling around for it. John recommends to George, just if you don't know the word, just put cauliflower in there and just keep going. So sometimes it doesn't matter if the words aren't perfect. You just keep going, you get some form, some structure, and you go back and you refine. Sometimes it takes a while to get to Tucson, Arizona. Okay, number five. There are people you should listen to and people you shouldn't listen to. And you get a real sense of this when you look at the way that they interact with the director and the way that they interact with Glyn Johns. Now, Glyn Johns is, is a, he's an en a record engineer. George Martin's producing, but Glyn Johns is the engineer. Glyn Johns is like, he knows what he's talking about. So when he's talking to Paul and the other Beatles and helping with arrangements, when, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Another interesting thing is listening to Mal help Paul with the lyrics to the long and winding road. And, and, and what's more, Paul listens and takes it. He doesn't use, Mal suggests that using waiting twice doesn't sound right, maybe standing. And then, yeah, because you need another set of ears, but another set of ears has to be trusted. Mao is someone they've known for years. Glenn is really professional, knows what he's talking about. However, you also see Lindsay Hogg, who is just, 
yammering, 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 yammering on and on and on about this, we'll do it in, in the desert and he's not listening. He's not listening as people say, I don't want to go to the desert. I don't want to do that. And so some people are not worth your time. They're not going to give you what you need. And not only that, they're going to, to have their own agenda. And he definitely smacks of someone who has his own agenda. If somebody, if somebody comes out so much better than their reputation led everyone to believe, it's Yoko. And if, or the stories led everyone to believe, it's Yoko. And if someone comes out really not looking good, it's the director, I'm afraid. He just does not. He's a little too starstruck. At the very least, that's the most charitable thing I can say about it. But sometimes people can't hear you over the sound of their own agenda, and you have to be careful of those people. There are people you trust and people who I'm going to disregard it. Now, that's not to say you disregard everybody. That's ego talking. Some suggestions are good. Some suggestions are not good. You have to decide who you trust. That's the important part of it. It's not that you know best all the time, but you do know best about who you should trust. Okay, number six. Even the best of creators need other professionals to help them produce a final polished product. Okay, the Beatles are not sitting there recording and just sticking it on a tape recorder. They're listening to... Glenn, and they're listening to George Martin in the control room saying, hey, can we do another take? That didn't sound right. They're, this was doing that. There are people to help you. You do not have to do it all yourself. Even if you are producing something yourself, even if you are making your own book, yourself publishing your own book, that doesn't mean that you do have to do everything yourself. There are people there who can help you, people who can make the job easier because doing everything yourself gets really, really tiring and you that's when you make mistakes. Okay, seventh thing, sometimes you have to know when to quit. Sometimes you just have to know to say, all right, see you around the clubs. Sometimes you do. Sometimes it's, 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 it's like, you know, um, it's premature or it's hasty, but sometimes you just need to know when to quit. Sometimes you need to know when to quit a project. Not necessarily everything, but just sometimes you need to know when to quit a project. And that's a really important thing. Eighth thing. Changing an instrument or technique can sometimes help you create something new. And I'm thinking of George and Old Brown Shoe, which he is working on the piano with the help of Billy Preston because the piano allows chord progressions or chords that are really hard to play on the guitar and he could create a new sound. And Old Brown Shoe is a really funky sound and it doesn't sound like what, he usually sounds like on guitar. So sometimes what you're wanting to do is I've been writing this genre, maybe I'll try this, something else. Maybe I'm, I'm feeling bogged down with a novel, maybe I'll try a short story, maybe I'll try a poem. It doesn't have to be for public consumption. Sometimes it could just be to play and loosen up and get back into your mojo. Okay, number nine. Nothing is done without risk, and in order to risk, you need support, okay? That's one of the things that you see the Beatles have is they have each other and they have support. You can take a risk. You can say, hey, I have something new, and take that risk with people if you know they'll support you. And I think one of the loveliest things is watching George helping Ringo out, who is by far the weakest of the songwriters of the four of them with Octopus's Garden. It's just beautiful watching him, him help his friend 
take this risk, try this song. It's a, it's a great song when it's finally done, which you don't see, but you see that initial help and risk and risk taking and it's just lovely. You want to have those people to support you, people who will help you with taking risks. So ten, tea and snacks are essential. Copious amounts of tea and toast are eaten and drunk throughout. Sometimes harder things, but you know, each to their own. Eleven, don't overwork a piece. Know when to let it go. I mean, they're, t they're, they're preparing for the concert and then it's like, okay, so, right, we better start doing something else because this is going to start getting stale. We're going to start losing it. We know it and we're going to start losing it. That's the time when if you're writing, you want to, you know, I, I've been overworking this and I can't see it anymore and I need other people to give me feedback to reflect it back to me because I can't see it and if I keep, I have to let it go. Sometimes you have to just let it go. Even if you think, oh, I could do more, I could do more. Oh, we could always do more, honey. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll get better the more you tamper with it. Number 12, your past works can provide inspiration or a jumping off point when you're feeling dry. So here they are with this pressure to create an album in 21 days. And what do they do trying to work up material they go back to stuff that they wrote as teenagers now they don't leave it in their teenage selves composition stage but something like one after 909 or two of us are both really early pieces that they did they'd written really early they hadn't been written and put on they hadn't been put on any of the earlier albums and they were just things that it's like okay we need material for this what are we going to do sometimes those earlier stuff you could go back you can look at you can think oh there's stuff that I now know with what techniques I now have that can make this actually work I abandoned this ages ago because I didn't have the technique to do this. Now I do, so now I'm going to come back to it and maybe take this little bit that I really like out of it and use that. Okay, you do number 13. You don't need to be anyone other than yourself. Yes, you have your limitations, but you are the only qualified to tell your story. Okay? You don't need to be anybody else. You are you. You just, you just got to be you. Everyone has those things that they feel insecure about. I mean, it's not a personal failing if you feel insecure about something. It's just life. So don't be hard on yourself. Okay. So following on from that, number 14 is everyone feels insecure sometimes even a beetle and i'm thinking here about when george harrison says you know um you need eric to do that because eric eric clapton he feels could do could play whatever he's being asked to play better and 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 john says no we don't need eric we, we need george harrison we have george harrison to do this and so everyone feels insecure. Everyone feels that what they are doing is they look around and they see other people doing stuff and they think, oh man, they do that so much better than I do. But you know what? You can, you do what you can do and what you can do is valuable. Yes, you're going to feel insecure, but that doesn't mean that that feeling of insecurity is the truth. I mean, George Harrison is, the, is, is this, he's a great guitarist. Like he's a really great guitarist. He doesn't need to be Eric Clapton. He doesn't. He's George Harrison. However, even he can feel insecure. And insecurity comes out in different ways. And you see that. You see that they're, they're, they're there being watched, which is, 
you know, for us, 50 years later, it's like, wow, this is amazing. But for them, it was making them feel very insecure and very self-conscious. And, and you can see the way that it comes out. Like George gets really black mood and quits. Um, Paul gets really bossy and, and nitpicky. And, and, and John just sort of floats away of course he was on several things at the time and Ringo Ringo just you know is like I'm just gonna sail over this and you know but they all have their own way to cope with that that stress and that insecurity and that being watched and the pressure which is another thing that their director did not help with did not help with I mean, anyone would have quit under those circumstances. I'm amazed at their forbearance, really. Okay, and the final thing, the 15th thing to learn from Get Back as a creative, you can't please everyone. Even, people even complained about a free concert by the Beatles in a lunch hour. I mean... <laughs> You, it, there are always going to be people who hate you. Haters are going to hate. There are always going to be people who don't like what you're doing. You're not doing it for them. You are doing it for the people who love you. For every person who said, nin, 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 called the cops on them, there were dozens going, wow, the Beatles are playing and I'm here and this is amazing. You see? So I understand that eight hours is a big commitment in time. I'm currently on my fourth watching. I told you, big fan, big fan. Couldn't let how to have this one. Could not let how to have this one. I'm currently on my fourth watching of this behemoth. I will probably have a few more just to soak up the vibe. Highly recommend it if you're a creative, if you're a Beatle fan, like I don't need to push this on you at all. But if you're a creative, highly recommend it. I personally love watching behind the scenes things and seeing how the creative process works. And this is a really intimate, enormous piece of documentary that is looking at one of the most talented biggest bands ever so in terms of like helping with creative process absolute just priceless so anyway i'm gonna see you later and i'll be back next time with an actual book won't be so long don't have to hide from her infernal majesty anymore. I think I got away with it. She, well, she's, I think she stopped chasing up, looking for me. Been hiding in the large cupboard under the stairs. Anyway, I will see you guys later. Peace and love. Peace and love. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Cocky Press website www.blackcockypress.com.au where you will find books and other materials to help with your writing.